Okay, so what we're going to do now on this tiger is we're going to do a pull shade. Very subtle pull shade. So what we're going to do in this one, you can use any one you want, but I like to use Tamiya because it flows good. I tend not to go with Model Air or any of that because it will plug up the works and you want it really super, super thin. So we take this and basically all we're doing is we're mixing up with a brush and we're taking a brush full and we're dropping it into the thinner. Basically, translucent black. You do not want a solid color. You want it very, very thin. You do this step after you have done your um, deck line. And that's what you want, is just very thin, subtle, super subtle, subtle lines. So we'll get this hull out of the way here, and we're going to start with the turret. And what we're going to do is just the some of the more major, major areas, like this big seam across the top. And you just want your, you just want very thin. What we're doing is we're just adding a little bit extra to our pin wash, and it gives it that little bit of shadow. Think of it as a, as an enhanced pin wash. Put it in all your seams and all the edges of your panels. This works really great on aircraft. see it just it just darkens it up around the edges and gives you a really nice extra you don't need too much of it you just need to go around the edges like this You don't get too carried away, and if you muck it up, well, you wash it off with a little bit of thinner. Not a big deal. Remember, guys, when I said there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just what you like. Okay. What you're doing is you're creating artificial shadows. Color kind of like color modulation, but color modulation I don't like. I just I don't know. It's very difficult to do well, and it's very easy to do poorly. So so you can see it just kind of makes those seam lines just pop a little bit more, and it's really good for this translucent color on your uh, muzzle brakes. And don't worry about, basically you don't want it black, but you just want a little bit of a black tinge to it. And apparently these barrels tended to turn a little darker color. So I'm just going to darken up this entire barrel. Because apparently the German barrels tended to discolor from the heat of the rounds passing down them. That's what I've read. I've read it more in one place. So I'm just giving them a little bit of... A little bit of black just to give that a little bit more of almost a not quite burned effect but just to give that a little bit more darkness to it now on the hull same thing hit the big seams like fenders like that and you see I eh, effed up don't worry about it guys that's why you that's why you put on the uh, clear coats Boom. just like that so you clean up yeah it's a little bit up but you know what when we start adding all our streaking and all the rest of our stuff, you won't notice it. But you will still notice these dark and highlighted areas here, eh? And the key word here is subtle, subtle, subtle. You don't want big black lines. That's why you thin down your paint so much. To give it a very translucent look. See that middle line there I did? It just gives it that look of age and weathering, and that's what we're going for. That's why we're calling it weathering. You're weathering up the tank to make it look used and old. But remember, the service life of, life of these tanks may be days or weeks, hours. Months would probably be pushing it for a German tank at this time of the war. So keep that in mind when you start chipping and weathering. You're not making heavy, I know a lot of guys like to look at heavy industrial equipment. 
uh, some of those heavy industrial equipment that you're basing your weathering on are 20, 30 years old of solid continuous use day in day out. These tanks did not have a very long lifespan. I mean, what's the oldest German tank could have six years? And that's max. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, realistically, probably months. Months. A year may be a long time. Maybe two years would be max for any, any piece of German armor. So keep that in mind when you're weathering it. So I'm going to carry on with this and we'll take a look see when we're done. So we've got the uh, Tiger in a full gloss. We've got the decals on. We've got uh, the post shading done. We've got the pin washes done. And now we need to add a filter just to kind of level everything off and bring it all together. And we will be using one of MIGS wash, MIGS filters, but you can't put a filter on a glossy model. It just won't work. So we're going to go to a semi-gloss. Now you can use a convert, uh, commercially available semi-gloss, but I kind of like to uh, make my own. And with that I use XF86 Clear Flat, not to be confused with the flat base and of course good old X22 clear uh, equal parts gives you a nice light satin finish uh, mixed up with Tamiya airbrush thinner goes on great let's get at her the satin finish has had about 12-15 uh, hours to set up so what we're going to do now is going to give it a very light filter and in this case I'm going to use a pre-made filter it's um, MIGS P242 tan for traditional tri Tonal Camel. You don't need to buy this. This 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 stuff's stupid expensive. Just get some good quality odorless thinner at a um, art supply store. Uh, a little bit of a brown or tan enamel uh, oil, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You got your own filter. So the point of this is just to kind of draw everything all together and make it look a little bit more uniform. If you look at the, some of the German uh, German um, tanks, they're so dusty and they're so dirty you can barely see that they have a camouflage pattern on them. Now, the reason we had given it a, uh, a clear coat and then the flat coat is to protect this washes, the pin washes that we did earlier with enamels. Now, if you do your pin washes with acrylic, you don't need to worry about it. But I found that acrylics just don't work very well for a pin wash. I just I don't know why they just don't flow as well, and to me they just don't give as much nice, rich, deep color as a, as an enamel base does. So it's pretty simple. What you do is you just pop this on. Just I I always use an older brush for this because the enamel paints can really dick up good quality brushes. So you don't need a super quality brush for this. And that's it's just that simple, guys. You just work it down. I always try and keep your um, keep everything down. Remember, gravity pulls everything down and any 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 dirt or dust or washes or rain or anything is gonna go downwards. So try and keep it going down. Mind you, of course, on the Zimmerit finish, that's really difficult to achieve. What you pretty much get is what you pretty much get on the Zimmerit. So we'll carry on here. You can probably hear my cat. My one female cat is looking for a boyfriend again. And she's meowing and carrying on and ripping up my chair looking for attention. So basically we just we're just gonna go over the whole model with this. Um, some got some uh, fellows like to put down to wet their model with uh, thinner first. I've tried that. To me it just gives it more of an opportunity for the thinner to uh, dick up the paint underneath. So I, I quit doing that. I just go filter over top. You can go heavier, you can go lighter. But I just want to keep it fairly light and fairly um, gentle. I don't want to make this look like a really rough tank. Once we've got the filter done, we'll do a little bit of chipping around the turret and uh, some dust. Okay, guys, I'm going to add some chipping. I'm going to keep the chipping down to a very light level. Basically, just where you'd find it where the guys were clambering onto the vehicle. So we're going to have a little bit here in the front and a little bit here in the top. Tiny little bit around the... Uh, Commander's Coppola and the loader's hatch. That's about it. Maybe a little around the the uh, toolbox. But I want to keep this as a fairly new vehicle within about maybe two months of being manufactured. So it's not going to be beat to crap. So to make the chips, I'm going to be using a model color. 
Uh, number 139 and 165, gray, green, and mahogany brown, also listed as 866 and 846. We're going to use a couple different brushes. We're going to use the uh, HF, the super fine Tamiya brush. And one of my favorite brushes is a uh, Newton and, or Windsor and Newton O, for making some of the larger brushes. We're going to mix up those two colors in our palette here. We're going to keep it fairly wet and fairly thin. So it's just going to go for a slightly rusty black gray color. I'm not going to worry about doing um, any uh, chipping with the, with colors. We're just going to keep it as if it just chipped down because from what I've seen, like I said, I don't want to make this really, really rough. So we're going to just start around the loader's hatch, get the old magnifiers on. And you're just going to be very subtle. You're just going to tap the brush along the edges of where you would probably get chips and scratches and the key here to this guys is subtle very often less is more um, remember these aren't heavy equipment this isn't a heavy equipment this isn't a caterpillar or a grader or something that's been out in the field for 20 years working hard this is a tank that's maybe had a couple of months work, a couple of months in the field, and that's about it. I'm gonna zoom right in here. You can see what I'm doing. So you want to keep your paint fairly thin, but not too thin. You just gotta find the right mark, and you just kind of play with it on the edge. Where would these get beat up? what would get wear and tear every single day of this tanks probably very short life and that's really all you have to do just keep it very subtle and keep it very light and that's generally how I like to do chips now if you don't feel comfortable using a pen or paint and a brush, you can use pencils. These are Persima colors, black and dark brown. Pick them up at the art store. I got these at Michael's, I don't know, a couple bucks a piece. Uh, sharpen them up to a really nice sharp point and use them for your chips. It's just as simple as drawing chips, drawing scratches, drawing little areas. And you can really get subtle and you can really get tiny with them. It's, I'm not sure how well this is coming in on camera. Let's zoom right in. So as you can see, you just take the, take it and you basically just tiny little micro squiggles, just tiny little squiggles where the uh, boots, the hobnail boots or the boots may have hit. And that's really all it takes guys to do some really subtle tiny little chips and scrapes and crunches and and it's it's it, it doesn't jump right out at you it's something you, you see after a little while after you're sitting there looking at your model for a while you can see all these little micro scratches where they'll pop out and they're so much more subtle than paint that they just they look very very realistic so you can basically can go over and do your entire model with these different colors like this just odds and ends here where maybe something hit and somebody stepped or somebody walked over the top of the turret scuffed the paint you can make little if you want to make a long scratch you can just kind of lightly go like that and bang there's a scratch one over there another one there who knows maybe somebody dropped the ammo box here and hit made a couple of big chunks but there you go these little pencils are the shit man I highly recommend them. Uh, you should add them to your uh, add them to your collection. That's the Persima Color uh, pencil crowns. Okay, now we gotta address these nice, bright, clean, shiny treads. They're the right color, but they're way too pretty looking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some old XF20, put it in our palette. We're using some Russian Earth and some standard rust Mig pigments. 
We're going to mix them up into a slurry, a heavy paste, and then slather them on the treads. Okay, we've got it mixed into a nice slurry, which is really making a mess here. And you just brush it on. This one's a little bit heavy in the rust color, but that's all right. We can uh, give it some black wash afterwards. It's a little bit too red, so let's get some black smoke. Remember guys, everything is, everything is a work in progress. And we'll crash some black smoke into there. That's just way too orange for a fairly new tank. We want it, uh, we just want it to look war, not wore out. So let's mix this up and as you can see, as you can see, as you can see this turns into a really nice flat metal looking track after it dries off. So keep that in mind guys uh, for doing tracks is just to mix up a slurry of uh, thinner, XF20 thinner and uh, and uh, and good old uh, Vallejo pigment. I'm going to do these ones up here because they're a little bit a little tidy looking up here and these uh, tracks were cast metal so they did tend to discolor really quick. Okay because this model is based in the summer August of uh, 44 we're going to dusty it up a bit and for that we're going to try this MIG dust, it's MIG ammo uh, 036 dust. It looks surprisingly a lot in color like the uh, Tamiya Dactana usually use. So, Let's just see how it goes. I'm not sure how it's going to spray. Seems to spray not bad. I thinned it out quite a bit with a MIG uh, with Vallejo primer. We're going to keep it nice and light. I don't want to overwhelm everything. And because I'm going to show this on a hard packed surface, I will uh, add a lot of uh, silver to the um, tracks. Like I say, you just want to keep this really light, really subtle. You need just very little in your paint cup. Might even be bordering slightly on a little too white. So let me just finish this up, guys. So a couple more things you want to do just before we call this puppy good. We'll take our Persimicolor black pencil and we will color in along the tracks where the steel road wheels run just to give them a little bit darker um, look of wear on the tracks. So we've done that front and rear and we're also going to want to uh, give a little bit of uh, silver dry brushing onto these uh, tracks because we're showing um, wear on a heavy, on a, on a fairly firm road surface. Now I've gone ahead and started these. Now back in the old days, you know, you absolutely had to do all your dry brushing with a flat brush. Now I'm just using a, a sitable large brush. Works good for this kind of stuff. And basically just, I'm using, uh, what am I using? I mean, you can sit at a little uh, iron breaker. I really like their, it's a nice silvery chrome and you basically just use the edge of your brush and just hit the highlights of the uh, of the tracks. So there you have it guys. We're going to wrap this puppy up and call her done. Uh, but the only thing I left I've got to do is um, paint that uh, antenna black. And she's looking all good. So thanks for coming along guys. I really appreciate this. Um, on the next one we are going to probably go a little bit heavier on the weathering. Uh, do some much heavier chipping and show a much, much more heavily worn 
a piece of armor probably uh, in a um, winter camouflage scheme but for now until then guys thanks for watching remember to uh, subscribe give this a like give it a thumbs up and give me some feedback thanks very much for watching guys appreciate your time